Now, on SSNATL.com. Discussions in this show should not be construed as specific recommendations or investment advice. Always consult with your investment professional before making important investment decisions. And now, Financial Renaissance with the M's. And we are live with Financial Renaissance with the M's. Happy Labor Day weekend, everyone. Hey! Hey, listen, what an incredible weekend we have been having. Um, Listen, uh, it is Black Pride, Black Gay Pride here in the city of Atlanta. And, you know, our Black Gay Pride weekend actually kicked off... um, I think it was Wednesday at the mayor's office, and uh, I ran into a lot of people at City Hall, and I have to say thank you, thank you, thank you uh, so much for, sh- for giving me all the love about the show. You know, we write the show, we do a lot of things, and I just never know whether or not, you know, it's resonating or if people are really getting value from it, because so many of you that know me don't put comments, but that's okay. We're, we're going to fix that. Um, good morning, Carolyn, Caroline. So, um... So in addition to that, uh, the show for the love, I also um, went to a fashion show, uh, I think it was called Andro Fashion Show, hosted by Kia, Kia Comedy, which was incredible. Uh, It it exceeded my expectations. I would have probably loved it a lot more if I had been 15 years younger. Something about young models and stuff like that and looking at, you know, young people that my my son should be dating just feels a little creepy. So my wife and I, we just kind of kept our eyes down and, you know, just really didn't look. And then uh, Friday night we had... um, went to a comedy show which was incredible at my sister's room uh, in Midtown Atlanta Uh, and then afterwards we did kind of this uh, silent party where you wear the headphones and it's got the different colors three different DJs and we thought we were out there like doing something and then finally we're like oh yeah we're ready to go home I thought it was three o'clock in the morning it was midnight and we get to the get outside of the club it's like a line of young people that are just now coming out we're ready to go home and all the young people are coming out to play so you know I get it you know I'm over 50 now so I I understand that the party scene is not really for us but um, I did want to say um, AARP was on I believe it was last week we you know are doing stuff about romantic fraud and schemes and things like that and um, I had someone pull me aside this weekend and say hey you know when you guys are doing your show and you're talking to the elders about you know protecting themselves um, you know from romantic scams and things like that can you guys please do everyone in the medical industry profession the nurses and the doctors a favor by talking to our parents and grandparents about safe sex yes it's Sunday morning you should be just as grossed out as I am apparently there's a whole lot of STDs floating around in these um, senior uh, homes, <laughs> senior centers, <laughs> assisted living facilities, etc. I heard that because of Cialis and Viagra, uh, things are just on and popping in there. So, you know, you add a little bit of that cannabis and that good loving feeling. Those hippies from the 60s are now these, I don't know what you want to call it, um, just... Oh, that just totally messed me up today. So, anyway, if you do have questions um, and you do have comments, feel free to slide into my DMs. No pictures at all. Um, You can slide your comments, questions, anything that you want to say that you don't want to do online. Um, Go ahead and put it in in the DMs on my Emma Knows Money uh, page on both Instagram, Twitter, and uh, I believe also Facebook. And if you know me, then you can go on my Facebook, Emma Folks, and you can just slide into the DMs there. Katrina will answer or she'll give me the questions so that I can um, answer them on air and I promise I won't out you. Anyway, and you can always join the conversation at 678-613-5857. We will be back in 300 seconds on Financial Renaissance with the end. Lots of people meet friends and potential love interests online through dating sites, social media, or mobile apps. It can be a great way to meet people, but not everyone is who they say they are online. In fact, scams related to online relationships are on the rise. It's a red flag if the person wants to move quickly to personal email or instant messaging to continue talking. Professors love quickly. Claims to be from the United States, but is working or traveling abroad. Plans to visit, but cancels at the last minute. Ask for money to deal with an emergency or ask you to open a bank account for them. Here are some things you can do. Cut off contact if you suspect a scam. Watch your wallet. Don't wire money, send cash, or put money on gift cards for someone you know only online. Learn more about online relationship scams at aarp.org backslash fraudwatchnetwork. And we 
are back with Financial Renaissance with the M's. Good morning, everyone. You are listening to me live on SFNATL.com on America's number one urban digital station. That's right. We are off the FM and AM. We are digital. We're 21st century up in here. And you can watch us live. If you're watching me on Emma Knows Money on my Instagram or on my Facebook and you want to see the actual produced version of the show, which I recommend, just on Facebook, go to Sensation Station Network, hit the like button, and then you can see the show in all its production value, which is much better than just watching it live on Periscope or on my uh, Facebook Live. So um, you can also follow me on Emma Knows Money um, on YouTube. I need more subscribers, so I need everyone to go on my YouTube page and go ahead and, and subscribe so I can have my, uh, I think they'll give me my Emma Knows Mo YouTube backslash Emma Knows Money once I get 100 subscribers. So um, I only have the, the three, my mom, my bonus dad, and my biological dad, so I need some help there. <laughs> All right, so today or this weekend is Labor Day weekend. And, you know, we, we celebrate Labor Day. Um, we're happy, we're grateful because we get a Monday off. But do, do you ever take the time to wonder, like, what the heck is Labor Day and why are we celebrating a day that has to do with people working, right? So let, let's go back to the 1800s. Uh, corporate America, we had the, uh, I think they called them uh, robber barons, and we had, you know, the great corporate magnets like J.P. Morgan and John Paul Getty and just all these people that had these, you know, massive corporations. It was during what we called in our country the Industrial Revolution, right? That's what set America apart from a lot of the other countries. So there's a couple of things that happened in America. Number one, we had slaves. Uh, so the slaves built a, a huge portion of our country uh, free labor, right? Uh, no, no, you know, everybody knows that. No big deal, right? Not no big deal, but we already know that. The next wave of, of uh, work that attributed to our country being in its greatness also came on the backs of many Americans who were either extremely poor or who had just immigrated or, or migrated to our country. And I'm talking about um, people from Europe who were not of, say, British descent, not of French descent. So I'm talking about Italians, Polish, Irish, um, anybody, Spaniards, you know, they, Spaniards, they kept on the West Coast, you know, they're like a pariah um, to the Brits back in the day. So we're looking at the year, again, 1882, September 5th, New York City, right? Sounds like the beginning of a great story. Um, the American labor movement organized the first parade um, in America that to celebrate Labor Day. And the reason why um, they decided to kind of get together and, and, and ask for rights of the workers is because back in the day, workers would work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. So literally, you would work until you died. And when you died, they would just go get your kid. They would actually have five and six-year-olds in mines, um, all kind of unsafe um, areas because kids are, you know, they're small. So their little tiny bodies can fit into little tiny spaces, uh, get into little tiny things. And, you know, if they, if they pass away, so be it. And even though your kids will, you know, you're at work, you're in the mines, your kids standing right next to you, they're in the mines working with you, dirty faces, black lung, <laughs> uh, they weren't even getting paid as much as their parents, even though they were doing, you know, a full day's work. So labor, you or that's what kind of started the whole labor movement, American labor movement. Um, so they decided that, you know, hey, we don't want, we don't think that workers should have to work seven days a week 12 hour days and that's where we got the um, eight hour day that's where we got breaks that's why we now have uh, safe conditions in our office like clean air take that deep breath in that's right clean air that we breathe we take for granted at the office because you know hey a hundred and something years ago nobody cared whether or not you had good air to breathe or not whether or not you had sanitary conditions to work in you know, in our country, people are supposed to wash their hands before they go touching stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff when you hear people talking about regulations and hating regulations and big government, et cetera, et cetera. This is one of those times when big government stepped in and told the 1% that, hey, you know, in order for our country to thrive, we can't chew them up, spit them out, and expect there to be replacements. You know, these are human beings, not little bots that we put together. So don't think that this, uh, that this happened without any type of strife whatsoever. Um, back in the day, 
there was a, a um, what is the name of this thing called? There was a, um, a boycott that came about. Um, there was a boycott with the rail car workers. They called for a boycott and they basically took uh, the, the rail traffic in our country to a grinding halt. Just like over in Hong Kong, how they kind of protested outside of the, uh, the airports and they, they, they made you know kind of air traffic come to a grinding halt. When you take a country's ability to make money and it comes to a grinding halt, people start to pay attention. People start to take notice. People start to get upset because their money is being impacted and they want it to end. So when we look at what's happening in Hong Kong and we're wondering, well, why are they singing you know, our national anthem and waving American flags? It's because in our country, our protesting from the American Revolution and every other iteration of some type of civil rights in our country has happened by way of protesting boycotting and also stopping the flow of money. So, you know, again, I can't tell you what to do, but look up the Haymarket hay riots of 1888 in Chicago. Both sides got it, okay? Police officers and workers were both killed. So when we take this, you know, tomorrow's Labor Day, we're gonna, you know, sleep in or do whatever. Remember that there are some people that had to lay their life down so that we would have eight hour days five days a week and be able to spend time with our kids. When we come back on Financial Renaissance with the M's, we have my m and money tips, we have my top five news stories, and then we're also going to have an Atlanta Public School School Board candidate, Paula Coopersmith, who's going to be on to talk to us a little bit about what she plans and how she sees the future of Atlanta's education system. When we come back. And we are back with Financial Renaissance with the end. Oh my goodness. So I gotta tell you this. Yesterday was one of those days where I'm not a yeller. I don't get I don't typically have road rage, things of that nature, but I was at an event and some of the people started either getting a little hungry, started getting a little sick. It was early in the morning and I decided to, you know, I was in a side of town I wasn't familiar with, and I'm like, hey, I'll jump in my car, I'll go grab some breakfast bars, bring it back, whatever. So I jump in my car and I say, hey, Siri, you know, take me to the, the nearest uh, grocery store. And Siri ends up taking me to where the major grocery stores uh, in the city actually have their warehouses. So I'm on this back road yelling at Siri, you know, cursing at her and, you know, saying, you know, hey, Siri, you know, take me to, G, you know, <laughs> GD, Siri, take me to the grocery stores where that actual human shop at. Okay, Emma and then gives me the address of a actual grocery store that humans go to. I don't know how that transpired, but anyway, I uh, was a little you know, upset at Siri, and I think Siri's my first robot, and, and as soon as I am able to, I wanna change her voice, I wanna hear something British or Jamaican, but I wanted to smack the crap out of my phone yesterday. So I get to the grocery store parking lot, and I see a Papa John's. I am not a fan of Papa John's, full disclosure. Um, but I thought that it would be a way for you know me to get something quick for someone to eat, and it would be beyond breakfast bar. So I you know run inside Papa John's, and that's a whole other story. But want to know what's going on with Papa John's, right? Papa John's was that company where when the uh, President Obama was talking about uh, affordable health care, Papa John's owner. Uh, said that, hey, he can't uh, provide benefits for his employees. He's going to have to lay people off because he's got like 18 houses and be damned about your health care. I've got to keep my jet. In addition to being a Scrooge, he also made some racial comments last summer. Um, after being warned, he made some racial slurs on a conference call thinking he's talking to good old boys and people that are you know, not going to say anything about his, uh, his rhetoric. They did. Um, they, and he, he had to uh, resign from the board um, earlier this year, um, and they also let him go as, um, you know, basically he's no longer the face of the company. As a result of his comments and his behavior and everything else tied to the NFL and the kneeling and everything else, people said, you know what, this isn't pizza that we presently enjoy anyway. We don't need to buy it. So as a result, the sh shares or um, the shares of uh, Papa John's fell 34% in 2017 and 29% in 2018. So I'm talking millions, 
billions of dollars because we decided we didn't like the way Papa John's was behaving and we weren't going to deal with it anymore. Now they've got Shaq on board. Shaq has actually bought a Papa John's. Hopefully that's the store I bought from yesterday. But they've appointed Arby's ex-president, Rob Lynch, as the new CEO of Arby's. Okay? And there is a venture capitalist firm, private equity firm, called Starboard Value. And what they did is they waited for the price of the Papa John's stock to go down. When the Papa John's stock went down, they went in and they started buying it up. They invested $250 million in Papa John's since uh, February of this year. The uh, CEO of Starboard became the chairman of Papa John's. So, you know, and he was actually um, a, kind of a friend of the, um, the ex-CEO that we all don't like. Um, and he has even said that he felt that Papa John's was being run very poorly. Well, I have comments beyond uh, how it was being run. Let's talk about the quality of food. But bringing up Papa John's story to let you know as, you know, Americans, if there is someone that we are not comfortable with how they feel about us, whether or not they care about our families, whether or not we get good health care, good wages, etc., we don't have to uh, buy from them. We don't have to do anything. As a matter of fact, stop exercise your voice with your pockets and when you have the ability and enough cash to do so make the changes from within the company not outside the company um on the way paula cooper smith atlanta public school board candidate let's see what we can do to trip her up today on <laughs> financial renaissance with the m We are back with Financial Renaissance with the M's. I am so happy to have with me Paula Cooperson. Hello, Lambs. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. <laughs> it's so nice to see you not yelling at me or telling me to get out of your way. Or pushing or you through a door you again. Pushing through a door again, <laughs> yeah, things like that. We have the pleasure of meeting um, May? Yeah, Georgia Quality. I think it was Quality. Georgia Quality Dinner and... Um, we were, were all leaving. We all, I think, came down in the elevator together. We were and done. Yeah, we were done. It had been a long night. And I think I was blocking the door, you know, performing, doing my usual. And uh, I, I think, think I you were killing me. Yeah, yeah. I either asked you if you were coming with us or going with someone else that was with us. And you, <laughs> you said a couple of choice words to me about <laughs> blocking the door in the Rose Hotel. <clears throat> But anyway, <laughs> and here we and are. And here we are. You know, listen, I, I full disclosure, um, all candidates are welcome on my show. Um, even if you're not in the state of Georgia, if you're in the city of Atlanta and you want to drop by, you know, I have no issue with any candidates. However, I do do my research. And before I will speak to a candidate, I need to see that you've actually done something uh, besides thrown money at a problem. And uh, you remind me a lot of myself, besides your mouth, uh, you, was, you remind me a lot of myself because, you know, you, you know, you two were a single parent. Yes, ma'am. Uh, raising a son. And, and Just like you. Just like me. And, and, you know, raising kids and especially kids going to public schools, you know, you do see a lot of challenges. Yes. How right? old is your son? Um, 26. Yep. Mine's 21. Well, P.S. Grant. Yes. Mm -hmm. Aw. <laughs> Did he go to Grady? He did. He graduated from That's Grady. That's such a beautiful campus. It can be. I mean, it's just looking at it, and most people forget that it's right across the street from, like, our, our version of, cent of Central Park. Yes. <laughs> it's right across the street. Yep. But um, for me, pu public school was um, kind of a gift and a curse. Um, my mother wanted to homeschool me as a child, and she used to, she, I was, you know, went to public school in New York City, and she ended up fighting with the Board of Education uh, because she didn't feel that they were, she felt that they were undoing everything that she was teaching me at home. And then she had the bright idea to tell me how teachers got paid and how police officers got paid and librarians got paid from her tax dollars. So I was that kid in middle school who would go to school and tell the teachers whether or not I felt that they were living up to my family's expectations. Um, there's a lot of teachers in, in Hollis, Queens that, that taught at Linden Junior High School 192 who don't like me. <laughs> and um, I know my mom is thinking, oh my gosh, why do we have to go back through this? But I was that person that I felt that just because we were in public school didn't mean that we needed to have substandard uh, education. I'd always, and the reason why I knew the difference is I went to boarding school also for a little while. So there's a, there was a big difference in the level of education that we were getting. And when I look at what you've done, and I'm gonna read this list, okay. Uh, she chaired the elementary school local school council for four years. 
She served two terms as a middle school PTA oh, president. No. <laughs> Can I tell you what how I feel? Have you watched Bad Moms, the movie? I have you haven't never seen it. Seen it. All I right, couldn't don't do it. Don't I watch it. Couldn't. Don't watch it until no. after everything. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, I will talk about it after. But I'm the bad mom. Okay. I'm the one that when the PTA president came up and asked me to bake something, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I'm a single mom, beat it. Every like, one of those bad moms <laughs> made me a better person. Uh, <laughs> you also one of and the other thing that you did that I thought was just, you know, it's right up my alley. You chair the Grady Robotics and STEM Alliance, yes, and, and that is so important to you. And I'm looking at a lot of the work that you did, you know, fundraising, writing grants, and yes, pulling in corporate sponsors to make yep. sure not just your son's school, no. okay, because it's it's very easy to focus on on your child's school yep. and making sure that him and his friends and people that you know intimately or you know whatever um, are getting the money. But you did it for Maynard Jackson, yes. um, North Atlanta, Carver, and Booker T. Washington High Schools. Yes, ma'am. So you know. We kudos, just didn't tell the parents. <laughs> <laughs> kudos to you. So, so introduce yourself. I am Paula Cooper Smith. As Emma has mentioned, I'm a single mom. I live at the edge of Castleberry Hill. I tell anyone who will vote for me that they can stand on the train tracks and scream at me if I make a mistake. That's pretty close. Um, I am the mom of a son who has turned around and is now the STEM mentor for the FIRST Robotics team at Washington High School. Oh, wow. He absolutely loves mentoring a mostly female team. He teaches them to push out there, pass their own boundaries to compete. Okay. And they are doing beautifully. He took them to world championships this year. Now, did your yes. son do the normal high school to college route? He did do the normal college route uh, and you know if I had anything to do over with him again I might not have necessarily pushed on him for those norms why uh, because he lasted two years he had a full scholarship he gave it back and now he is an IBEW kid who is sworn in and going after his certification he travels the United States taking care of the airlines for American Southwest and United He's having the time of his life, and he will go back to college, but when he does, he will go as a certified commercial electrician. Right. And so we, you know, a, a lot, there's a lot of talk right now about, you know, um, you know, is college worth it because of the student loan debts and things like that? And here you have your son who basically went from high school, he did a couple years in college, which I still think is very important. Very important. But then went on to, to, to have a trade, which we're, we're lacking so much right now. You know, when I was in school, we had econ, even you know, economics, typing. Mm -hmm. Like, you learned how to do something, so when you left high school, you could support yourself. Yes. Right? Uh, things are a little different now. Well, we're trying to return to that. We really are. So that's why it's really important for me to bring the trades back into the community. They've been really working hard to get to us. They've had some roadblocks that they're willing to revisit, try again. I'm excited, because it's not just the kids in our community who need those jobs. It's also young families who are working hard to take root and need great jobs and great benefits to raise their children here. So it's a so two-prong approach. Let's think about middle, because, you know, I told you in middle school I had a little bit of a mouth. I got kicked out of typing because I said, hey, I'm not going to be anybody's secretary. Mm -hmm. I don't need to learn how to type. And to this day, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on a keyboard for writing it because I'm pecking, right? But I'm nobody's secretary. True. How about that? There you go. So if, if there was any, if, if we could teach middle, middle, middle school or something, what would it be? What do you think are some of those important things that they need to know? Well, since middle school hygiene isn't a class in the CCRPI, you know, and we can't fund it, I would say that our next best hope is teaching middle schoolers compounding interest. I would love to see kids with a compound interest calculator so that when they go out and they do their lemonade stands or whatever it is that they're doing as young entrepreneurs to make a little bit of extra money here or there, they learn how by the time they are 40, they could actually retire. Correct. And yep. you are spot on. My mother retired at 48. Awesome. She left, she <laughs> I'd left, love to be your mother right now. Yeah, I would love to be my mother too. It's a different day, different time, <laughs> different, different era, different era. You know, you, you mentioned compounding interest, and that's right up my alley. Mm -hmm. um, I taught my son, you know, back in the blockbuster days when he wanted to borrow money from me. Like, you can borrow it, but you're going to pay me interest. You're going to pay me 3%. 
Um, and so I taught him interest right away so he would never be in a situation where he would lend someone money and then, you know, you can't lend money for free. You can't borrow free money. You, you know what made I mean? your kid the favorite kid in school, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> he asked me about his personality. What does that tell you? <laughs> so what do you think about the importance of kind of financial literacy at a young age? Um, financial literacy at a young age is really important because kids, especially in my community where there's a lot of poverty, need to knock off the fear that comes along with planning for a future, whether it's college or whether it's a career straight out of high school. What they can learn, and in, this is a hard, hard lesson to learn right now in today's economy, but no one, and no one, definitely my mother, who handed me an ROTC pamphlet when I was graduating high school, we did not talk about the fact that grades are money. Yeah. And yeah. kids who, you know, we've got, uh, you know, the Zell Miller, you know, ways to pay for it with the Lottery Commission, that kids need to understand that that is their financial ticket to going through college and not paying anything. And the thing is, you can tell them, um, I call it brainwashing, programming, whatever. From the time they're little, if you tell a child they're going to get a scholarship, and my son, you know, full disclosure, he was, you know, exactly like me. Um, he did enough to get by. He didn't have to study to get Bs, and that's, it's like a gift and a curse, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yep. But you can't necessarily, at the time he was going into school, you know, with the recession, et cetera, there's some, you know, light bulbs that, that didn't necessarily click. Um, on the other side of this commercial, we're going to tell you about our kids, <laughs> how you can talk to them um, and get them financially literate, and also what adults can do to help themselves out when we come back on Financial Renaissance yes, with the Amps. Thank you. Lots of people meet friends and potential love interests online through dating sites, social media, or mobile apps. It can be a great way to meet people, but not everyone is who they say they are online. In fact, scams related to online relationships are on the rise. It's a red flag if the person wants to move quickly to personal email or instant messaging to continue talking. Professors love quickly, claims to be from the United States but is working or traveling abroad, plans to visit but cancels at the last minute, asks for money to deal with an emergency or asks you to open a bank account for them. Here are some things you can do. Cut off contact if you suspect a scam. Watch your wallet. Don't wire money, send cash, or put money on gift cards for someone you know only online. Learn more about online relationship scams at aarp.org backslash fraud watch network. This is big business. This is the American business. They sit there and they panic and they scream and sell, sell. Because they don't want to lose all their money, right? They out there panicking right now. I can feel it. They out there. And we are back with Financial Renaissance with the M's. I'll be eating apples. But that's okay. It's an apple dipped in Cheetos and orange juice. <laughs> to make sure it doesn't get all, like, grimy. I grabbed the orange juice bottle and forgot that we had, like, kind of pre-mixed it. So I am a school board candidate, and that means I am teetotal in this interview. <laughs> no, you didn't get any. It's okay. I, I, you, you will be, I, I, we, we kept you safe. I did everything in my power to make sure that I don't mess up your chances <laughs> of being electable because guaranteed. I could do that for myself. If you hang out with us past couple nights, yeah, border, borderline, borderline. <laughs> but listen, you know, we, we as, as, as single moms, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we have to, but back in the day, getting him to actually pay and do what he was supposed to do consistently. It's not the doing it, it's the consistency of, you know, receiving something from them sometimes mm -hmm. I do uh, that throws things off, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we, we spoke about financial literacy for young people. It is equally as important for grown-ups, right? It is. The one thing, though, that I see a lot of times with people that don't have a lot of means, they don't have anything to be really necessarily financial literate with. Like, they have enough money to pay rent no not even i didn't say anything else they yep. have enough money to pay rent not even yeah and then maybe you know a bill here or a bill there you know we we listened to a comedian uh, the other night saying that she was the queen of uh what was it trina arrangements payment <laughs> arrangements or something yeah she was the queen of payment <laughs> arrangements and you know we're all laughing about it and i thought oh my gosh you know it's a new norm it is. It's it's not like I can't imagine that sh that level of, of stress and and I can. If we're looking at women who make typically, 
you know, between, you know, 76 cents to the dollar, 80 cents to the dollar, for some people, 65 cents to the dollar of a white male, it really, really has an impact, you know, mm -hmm. and moving around. There's a lot of this stuff that has to do with the stability of kids and them being able to, you know, focus on what they need to focus on. School's hard enough, That's right. but imagine having to move or I being evicted, the shame mm -hmm. of being evicted. Right. So there's a lot of this stuff that happens with these kids and we don't, you know, we can look at them and point our fingers. Well, they're bad kids and they're, you know, blah, blah, blah. Nope. But it's so much bigger than that. Yep. My son and I moved four times in five years to escape Ooh. rent. Right. Uh, one day when he was supposed to be studying for his practice SATs, when he was a junior, he was sitting down to do that. And my landlord came and told me that my rent was going from 1250 to 1750 in a day. And I was making about $36,000 a year. So to keep him in his school, with his friends, with his teachers, with everything that he needed to do to stabilize his life, it went sideways. I can remember getting one traffic ticket. Um, one was $75. Couldn't pay it. I crumpled it and threw it in the back seat. And I ended up in court for $900. This is what happens. Interest. Yeah. Interest alone yeah. will yeah. kill you. Anything yeah. like that. Payment plans, it's all predatory. When you yes. are broke and trying to raise your kids, the tiniest little thing continues to mushroom. And it's exhausting. And we're not even feeding our kids. Right. And, I'm not, and, I, and the, the, this is such a good point because there are a lot of people who are kind of above that fray. And they have family members, you know. And the family members will say, this is what happened to me and blah, blah, blah. And people can't understand the, the trap that it ends up um, putting you in. What do you think? Um, so when, my, when I was growing up, you know, my mother had a, you know, she had a degree in uh, master's in medical microbiology or something mm -hmm. like that. But she could not afford to uh, be a scientist at the time because right. they didn't make enough money. So she stayed with AT&T for 26 years. Right. And she used to get something called overtime. Yes. Right? Time and a half. <laughs> uh, uh, I forgot. Something if you work like double time. I mm -hmm. think there was like an overtime, double mm -hmm. time, blah, blah, blah. So our, all our vacations, my braces, my private schools, like all this stuff was paid for by her working like an extra 10 to 20 hours on a Do week Do you know what basis. your mother was doing? She was defining Communication Workers of America. Oh, That's you know where she worked. I know that. Yes, ma'am. That is I how that. she got. Don't what get me she started. To this take is a care labor. Of you guys. This is a Labor Day <laughs> conversation. And that's I have where my we are. Labor Day. Labor. Yes. This yes, is all means. Labor Day. Mm -hmm. So given. So so again, I I should not have had to take out student loans because my mother would have done what you know she was supposed to. But I, like a lot of kids, you know, I kind of piddled around, started a business, had about two freshman years, and she was like, eh, you're on your own. I have a life <laughs> that I'd like to lead that doesn't involve you. You, however you want to do what you're doing, do it. And, you know, I join the Army, et cetera. So what do you think about nowadays, you know, we had the, I had the GI Bill. What do you think about the current student loan crisis? The current student loan crisis is going to be our next housing crisis. And what I do when I work with kids, which is usually two kids a year, is I sit down with them and work out plans to go for free because I don't want them to fall into that debt crisis. Most kids will come to me with pie in the sky conversations about where they want to go to college and they've got 10 of the most fantastic schools in the world. Look at the most I, beautiful campus. Most beautiful campus. And I explain to them that nobody's going to be looking that closely at a resume anymore. What they want to see is that you did it. And if you can do it on the public you know, university track, you can get it done for nearly free. You know, and again, with good grades, but also, you know, depending on family background, there are a million ways. I went down to Georgia State with one kid and brought a 40-page document of scholarships and grants that are all due by October. So if you work with people at the university before you even get there, you'd be surprised at how you can help a child go to school. So for you're saying that basically in high school, they should visit a campus Absolutely. and starts talking to, say, the financial aid Financial aid and admissions like back when you're in 11th grade and go and start asking for the grants and scholarships lists then because you've got to plan a year ahead to get that money, but it can be done. Yeah. Oh, it's for sure, for sure. Yep. You know, um, I, I, I feel for young people. Me too. I really feel for them because, you know, I did a story last week about the American dream, and we are actually the 31st, we're, in, in terms of countries that can achieve the American dream, mm -hmm. we're ranked number 31. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> South Korea's 10. Mm -hmm. 
The city is Cyprus. Yes. A country, a tiny country of Cyprus is number yep. one. That's inc that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So something has to be done uh, about the student loan. It, it, something has to be done about income. And I'm going to, we, we talk about the student loan crisis. We'll talk about financial literacy. But what we're really not seeing that where the dots are connecting has to do with income inequality. Mm -hmm. If we take care of that, a lot of these things, issues will resolve themselves um, if we stop being so uh, darn greedy. Um, what do you think is the is the greatest financial impediment on um, on families today that are just you know just trying to childcare, ah. childcare right from the start you know families who are just trying who are just starting who are building incomes you know who who may or may not own a home yet and most likely do not it's childcare uh, I did a video this morning where I was explaining that 60 percent of college students now need child care right and we would graduate 25 percent more college students if we had free and quality child care for them it is child care and pre-k because our kids need to start strong and yes. they're not not in district two i want pre-k and zero through four in our buildings if it could be free if it was in the same free. Like every basement free. <clears throat> every basement should have a child care how many lottery tickets have you bought i don't no, I don't. I know. Not, not oh my a, gosh! Not I'm a talking one. to a financial yeah, literate. Not a one. We I know. I call in my house. That's called stupid people tax. Ask my wife how many lottery tickets she's bought. Okay. No. How <laughs> many lottery tickets have you bought? <laughs> when it gets right. when it, when the odds are even worse. <laughs> so those people fund free pre-K. Supposedly, yes. They do, and we need it for them. We we do. We, do. It, we need know, it for everybody. I am an advocate because I am one of those that that walked the school barefoot both ways uphill in the snow. Yeah, you like, did. Straight up. <laughs> I got out of the military. I got divorced from my my son's father. Um, I was working full time. Mm -hmm. I was going to school full time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And raising and at that time he was under five. And you know what? Did you sell your boy, plasma like I did? No. Yeah, I did. I to got go close. <laughs> I got really creative. I started getting really creative. Like man, like you know, we didn't have the internet like mm -hmm. we have it today. That's so right. I couldn't get online and go like, oh, I have all these baseball cards. Let me sell this stuff. Yeah. Like I, you know, it, it was really, 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 really Hard. difficult. You know, people can say just go to college and and get an education. Somebody has to watch your kid. That's right. So I used to go to sleep at about two in the morning wake up at 5 30 get him ready get him to preschool by 6 30 to be at work i mean this hour and a half each way i mean oh horrible any little thing any little thing and even right. you know to 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 put something else on the kids in child care there are a lot of kids going to college who are starving yep they don't have enough money that was my son that was part of his anxiety when he went to school was that the cafeteria was closed on Sundays and he knew that the way he had gone to school at the time in my life that he had gone, I did not have enough money to feed him once a week. And sometimes in the evenings if the cafeteria had to be closed for other things, he went hungry. It was very stressful. It, it is. You cannot study. And, and I um, I vowed not to have to study for anything again. I'm, I'm <laughs> I've taken yep. enough tests and everything else. But when you're studying, you get hungry. Yes, ma'am. Like, if I sit down to do the show, like, all of us, I'm talking about snackish. Oh, <laughs> it's like when my brain is going, yeah. my stomach is like, feed me, As feed a mother, me. I was a wreck knowing that I couldn't feed him while he was gone. Uh, let's see. Did the summers ever freak you out as a parent? Summers freaked me out every single year, and I understand exactly what happens with food insecurity. Yeah, in the there's a there are parents like freak out because you know during the school year the schools you know sometimes in most cases will provide breakfast, sometimes lunch, and sometimes something afterwards. But in the summertime, when your kids are home, every time they go in the refrigerator. Every time. Cha ching, cha ching, cha -ching. Sweat, when they're sweat, growing. Sweat. Cha -ching, cha -ching, cha -ching. <laughs> I was a wreck. <laughs> So what would you say, like, as, a, as a single mom, what would you say was the biggest financial challenge? For me, I, I really do believe that it was rent, and it's, it's kicking our families right now. The churn rate in District 2 is between 35 and 50 percent, depending on the school. That means our children are moving between one and two times a year. The average is 1.5 times a year. Every time, Emma, a kid moves, it costs them three months of the school year. Yes. So if you're moving 1.5 times a year, you've missed half the year in continuity, emotionally, physically, academically, 
and you don't necessarily have the same teacher supports grade by grade to help you. That is the low hanging fruit that we could change for the schools in District 2 by stabilizing housing products. You know, on, on, um, there's, there's so many things that are swirling yep. through my head right now. Yep. Okay, so Mine many too. things <laughs> that are swirling through my head right now. And, you know, we will jump into um, some of these things having to do with kids and stability and our country being where it is today. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when we come back on Financial Renaissance with the M's here Thank with you. Paula Cooper Smith. Thank you, Emma. Cooper Smith. <laughs> And we are back with Financial Renaissance with the M's. Are we back, Sean? We are back with Financial Renaissance with the M's. We are talking about Labor Day. We are talking about public schools. We're talking about single parenting, income inequality. I didn't realize that kids were moving as much as they were moving in schools. Like, you're going to make me apologize to my mom. Maybe that is so. horrible. I know. Horrible. Right? I love that guilt. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I, didn't, I really didn't realize that kids were... Um, moving that much during the school year yes, and I cannot imagine I know what it did to me um, every time we moved and especially you know we moved from like the Bronx to Queens which is supposed to be a great thing but not in the middle of the school year. no never and then um, we moved from you know New York to Southern California you know in the summer but it was still traumatic but right. not as bad um, no, I couldn't imagine I couldn't imagine having to do that right. moms don't want it and then the the, the child care piece to me there, there has to be, there has to be a sensible way, you know, of whether it's using the retirees that we have now, um, that that are that aren't really ready for retirement. You know, maybe they can step in and help us out a little bit. Like, hey, watch my baby, and you won't have to eat cat food. <laughs> like, I'll cook for you. <laughs> we do have, we do have structure. There is structure. Yeah. There are organizations that really do champion zero through four. Yeah. Well, we when we come back, mm -hmm. we'll we'll jump into yep. a little bit more of the kids and the plight of the kids and what we can do uh, so that America can win. And, and throw your comments if you want. If you have always wanted to ask someone who was thinking about being on the school board a question about public school now is your chance i promise <laughs> when we come back I promise <laughs> everybody successful lays a blueprint out you laid the blueprint out i stayed true to my dreams and by doing that eventually it came true a lot of times you know it's like in life right life brings like drama and you gotta deal with this person and the funky relationship here and all these things you try and just kind of balance them out as best i can make a choice right you just decide what it's going to be who you're going to be how you're going to do it just decide and then from that point the universe is going to get out Everybody your way. Everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what real beasts do. Unleash your beast. Break your history. And we are back with Financial Renaissance with the M's. Is that 112? <laughs> I used to live right up the street from that. I didn't even... I, well, I live up the street from what used to be the club formerly known as, as uh, oh One Tweezy. One Tweezy. <laughs> What do you know about 112? What are you doing? You're sitting here no, dancing. No, remember, I am a school board representative. What are you doing? To You're not supposed to be bopping at one <laughs> peaches and cream. What are you doing, Mom? Oh, God. Well, it slipped out of character. <laughs> Bad mom is. <laughs> Therapy alert. All right. So you're you're in District 2. You're running for District yes, 2. Mm -hmm. It's a competitive district. Did you is. say? I would say so, yes. What do you think is the, is the district's greatest educational assets? Like, what is District 2 bringing? I mean, you know, you're entrenched in what's going on with schools. What, do, what is the District 2's greatest asset? What, what, do you, what would you be proud of? Or what is there to be proud history. of? About? History. 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 It's a great asset for the West Side. It's amazing. Atlanta history or yes. history as in school book history? Atlanta history as in part of school book history, part of national history. Uh, Booker T. Washington High School is where Martin Luther King Jr. graduated from. That's his alma mater. He was oh, a bulldog. I was about to make a com I was about to make a joke, but it's serious. I was going to say, oh, serious. tell me ML MLK uh, graduated from that school. He, he did. did. He what was it did. called then? It was called Booker T. Washington. Awesome. It was one of okay. two segregated schools in the city of Atlanta, and it's important that we keep that one open. It's 50% under-enrolled right now. Okay. So we are looking at making sure that that one comes back to life and does some beautiful stuff. Booker T. Washington class of 64, those are wonderful folks that I absolutely love. And as a potential school board member, I owe it to them. 
to make sure that their history lives. They're so beautiful. how do you, so it's 50% you said under, under enrolled. enrolled, meaning there's not, like it, the classroom sizes are smaller? Behinds in seats, 50% under So there could be a classroom with half the class seats. not there. Right. Is that because of taxes? Is it because of rents? Like why, I, I've never heard of a school being, a public school in a city being mm -hmm. under enrolled. Okay, it's all of those things. It's those things. I said like it, eight. Things. I know. Okay. It's it's many. It's all the things, Emma. <laughs> it truly is. Pick one. Uh, it's under enroll. Under enrollment. It, for me, the most the biggest concern is partly the why. Inviting the parents back. When I talk to parents, when I go door to door, I find parents. There are plenty of children here. Plenty of children in District Two who could go to Booker T. Washington. The positives are that the elementary schools are really taking off, so that okay. says to me that high school so can So that's going to be kind of like a feeder? That can be okay. the feeder. Um, but right now, the lack of confidence in the schools, you know, just has to oh, do with... Oh, so are they yes. sending their kids to public um, sending, private schools? Sending or? their kids to charters, charters they're charters sending their kids to public, they might be oh, homeschooling. No. Because uh, doesn't that affect the private. funding for the school if you it don't have enough butts and seats? Does. Oh, Every behind no. has a value. So okay. under-enrolled means under underfunded underfunded means underserved yeah. so when you have an over enrolled school you have a well served school when you have an under enrolled school you don't so we have to work together to bring the interest back to washington so that we also start to attract the funding we need all right hey uh coming up i want to talk to you a little bit about what you see as the bright spot with, within today's youth um, and I'll share with you some of the things that I've been seeing that really are making my heart smile and make me feel hopeful. When we sure. come back on Financial Renaissance sure. with the M. Energizing a nation, one listener at a time. It's SSNATL.com. Radio that's not dumbed down. I've had the most absurd nightmare. <laughs> I was poor and no one liked me. <laughs> I wake up every morning with that feeling. When I realize I'm not still living in Orange County, like, <laughs> what did I do wrong? Why did I leave? Why did I leave? Life was so good for me. <laughs> so, yeah, before the break, I was saying, you know, I, I've been seeing, my wife and I were watching uh, the U.S. Open last night. Yes. And, um, you know, something transpired between the young lady, well, she's from Japan, what's her name, Osaka? Osaka and Coco are Georgia's own. Mm -hmm. And... The, the humility, the kindness, the, I, you know, it, it just, it gives me so much hope and inspiration because they care. They so what do you see as, um, when you look at today's kids, what do you, what is it that, that shows you that they're, that makes you hopeful that we're not doomed? I see the same thing. And our kids today are brilliant. They truly are, I, and, and just on so many levels that I never had to be emotionally or yeah. socially when I was a kid. Well, we didn't have social media. No, we didn't, but they, they are brilliant, and they have decided to use their powers for good, unlike yes. some of us as we uh, were growing age, up. Yeah, yes. I remember the yuppies <laughs> yes. and the buppies. And the, they yeah. really are using everything that they have right there in their arsenal to yeah, do I, the right Yeah, I feel thing. that they're being more sensible, and they're not, they're watching what we're doing versus listening to what we're doing. You know, right. there, there, there's a, a I also a feel they're more entrepreneurial. There. They can pick just about anything up and do something with it and then create an idea and turn it around to their friends and well, go, hey, what do you think? And They and watch their parents go through the recession. Yes, So when you watch your did. parents go through something as tough as that, you, you decide, make a decision that, hey, I think I want to figure things out on, uh, on my own. Now, a question for you, and I always have this question when it comes to candidates. Why is money so tied to running? Like, Ugh. to me, you know, in some countries, I was listening to a um, podcast called Freakonomics, oh, and yeah. it was talking about the duopoly, the yep. current duopoly that our country has, and I've got, I can do a whole show about that. Um, but how can you effectively dedicate time to vetting out proposals and ideas and, and getting with the community if you have to raise money? Oh. And how do you raise money with people who don't have money? Raising money is, to the extent that you ought to raise the money to finance your campaign, extremely important because it gives everyone skin in the game of their own voice. That is the civics of the lesson. If you're a candidate who really cares about your race, you are passionate about reaching out to everybody for $5. You're not making assumptions. You are letting them into your candidacy and talking to them about the why. Call time for me. 
is extremely important. I resisted and hated it at first, and I still hate it, but it really does define you and your agility to explain yourself and, under and help people understand why you're worth backing. So people answer the phone? People answer the phone. People answer wow. the phone. I maybe, am... maybe 10 to 20% of the time, but that means your call volume is massive. Well, you, you know, school board races, you know, when I think of school board, I think of kind of smaller races compared to some of the other ones. But, you know, compared to the big ones, why is so much money kind of being... There's a lot of special interest money coming in. A lot oh, of special interest okay. money. Lots. Does this have to do with kind of privatizing education that I think that, is kind of looming out there somewhere? That's a looming discussion okay. that is a national well, conversation. Yeah, so we'll we can shrink it down to <laughs> District 2, and then we can also talk about on a very local level... Um, agendas, you know, do you want to stay a school board representative or would you like to power on through and do something else when you grow up? So ah, there is gotcha, some funding gotcha. there. So here, I here's what I like to be a school board member when here, I grow up. Here's what I want to see. I don't mind candidates taking money. Okay. They have to. Yeah, I don't mind. I get it. Um, but what I want to know was who are you taking money from because I want to know who you're beholden to. Are you beholden to me? Or are you beholden to someone who dropped a big check in your um, in your campaign? You know, do you plan on, will you disclose if I said, hey, Paula, who, who ponied up in your, in your campaign, who, yes. who dropped some dollars in yes. there, you would tell me? Yes, absolutely. And would you tell me on air? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, okay. Disclosure time <laughs> is by uh, the second. I think everything is into my e-file already, except for nine people who I forgot to put in their, their uh, vocation. So I'll go back and grab those and then have it in on time. Yeah, I, would, I think that that's just something that every I want to know. Like, I don't care about the super PACs and all these other things. Like, have them. Get all the money that you want, but let us uh, know who the heck it is. No, no. Sure. Let, yeah. us know who's, <laughs> let us know who's giving it. Mm -hmm. That's my thing is let me let some me peel back the layers. Some packs expect you to vote on, on the budget in certain manners, so there are some packs yeah. I won't take. Yeah. Uh, now, what do you think has been your, or what do you see as, as your greatest barrier uh, in your candidacy so far? Running out of gas. Energy? Running out, not energy. Low energy? No, 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 no. Oh. I am a very energetic person. I am talking physically gasoline. Oh, gas. money. Gas money. No. I have run out of gas in my car four times during oh, this like campaign. Oh, like literally. Literally. I now carry a gas can in the back of my car. It is pretty hysterical. I even Facebook about it. There is a computer glitch that since I've been campaigning, I haven't had the time to fix. So, oh, so you I don't know when you're running out of gas. There is an now. app for that. There's a, a, deliver, a gas delivery service. I'll You're share, kidding me, Yeah, right? I'll share it with you. I used to run out of, I used to get really close to E because I didn't, when my son moved out, I um, went to college. Yeah. I wasn't into pumping gas. That was something he used to do. So literally, I would end up with five, you know, my tank would say, you have five miles left, you know. So far, the most helpful people when I run out of gas have been on Boone. They're nice. Awesome. Yep. Nice. Yep. Nice. <laughs> so, you know, I, um, you, when I met you, I told you I wanted yes. you to come on the show, right? Absolutely. And I think I went on vacation and something else yep. happened. And then a couple of weeks ago, Georgia Equality, I think it was on a Saturday night. Yes, ma'am. Georgia Equality, um, what did they do for you? They endorsed they me. They endorsed you. Yes. And she sat right where she's sitting now. And Georgia Equality, Georgia Equality, you told her you were going to have her on the show in Georgia Equality. So, <laughs> no, that didn't happen. Or yes, that, that did happen. Yeah, that, that is exactly how it went down. Am I in the middle here? Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how I went down. You said you were going to do such and such. Well, you're the manager. Manage that. Um, <laughs> so how do you how do you feel? Um, let's talk a little bit about Georgia Equality and sure. why that endorsement is important for you. Very important to me that Georgia Equality or any equality organization in any state now vets down to school boards. Mm -hmm. School boards here in Atlanta, we'll just limit it to Atlanta, is uh, $1.2 billion toward children. Okay. And LGBTQ adults were LGBTQ children. And we need to make sure that we are uh, assuring our children and our families that anti-bullying processes that are already in place stay in place. Uh, that our adults, our teachers, teachers who are LGBT, who are in our buildings, do not have state protections. And because they don't, we need to make sure our school board members, when there are situations where they have to come before us, are fairly addressed. Um, beyond that, you know, uh, 30314, which is in District 2, has the highest concentration of HIV cases in the city. 5,000 cases in one zip code alone. Average around District 2 
is already tough enough, 2,700 per zip code. Mm -hmm. But when we go to 30314, tough. And that affects our kids and our families, and we all need to handle that compassionately. So tell, I want to thank you so much for coming um, on the show. I know it's early, and you've got calls to make and hands to shake and babies, <laughs> babies to, to kiss, kiss and all that stuff. <laughs> how can people support your candidacy, or how, where can people go to find out more about you? People can find Paula for APS on Facebook. Okay. Also on the web at paulaforaps.com. Okay. Early voting is now through September 13th, so the stations for that are the Fulton County Government Center at 130 Peachtree and the C.T. Martin Natatorium. Voting day, you would go to your own poll and vote for Paula on the 17th. All right. Well, thank you so much, Paula. This has been incredible. On the other side, we're going to come back with uh, our market movers and losers as well as my top five news stories of the week on Financial Renaissance with thank the M's. You, thank you. Lots of people meet friends and potential love interests online through dating sites, social media, or mobile apps. It can be a great way to meet people, but not everyone is who they say they are online. In fact, scams related to online relationships are on the rise. It's a red flag if the person wants to move quickly to personal email or instant messaging to continue talking. Professors love quickly, claims to be from the United States but is working or traveling abroad, plans to visit but cancels at the last minute, ask for money to deal with an emergency or ask you to open a bank account for them. Here are some things you can do. Cut off contact if you suspect a scam. Watch your wallet. Don't wire money, send cash, or put money on gift cards for someone you know only online. Learn more about online relationship scams at aarp.org backslash fraud watch network. Now is Smart Talk from programs like this. Your nation's urban station online on ssnatl.com. Yeah, Smart Talk from programs like this, from people like me. You don't even understand. I am a certified financial planner. What does that mean? It means I'm kind of brilliant when it comes to things financial. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in our country right now. And because it is a holiday weekend, I have chosen to take the mental break uh, because I feel like I have had financial PTSD um, for a number of years now. And I think we all just need a little bit of a break. So in the market movers and losers, talking about what happened last week, um, in the sneaker industry, um, of course, uh, Nike was down, Puma was down, Under Armour was down. But, you know, be, besides all of that, I don't even care how anything did last week because the real test of time or what's going to happen in, a, in the sneaker industry, clothing industry, is actually going to happen when we come back, when everybody goes back to work on uh, Tuesday. We'll find out what our president has decided to do with these tariffs. But did you know that the company Adidas and Puma is actually a family company. Those are two brothers. Um, and it was a, one of the greatest family rivalries of all time. Um, you know, if you grew up in New York, you know, Pumas, uh, Shelto Adidas was the thing, and the suede Pumas was the thing, the Clydes, I think they called them. But the brothers, there were two German brothers, uh, Adolf and Rudolf Dassler. And um, they ended up not getting along with each other because one family had to jump into the bomb shelter of another family during the war and someone made a comment about some dirty bastards are back again one of the brothers thought the other brother was talking about his family and there we have it so the pumas and adidas those two you know if you are uh, competing or you're thinking about those two brands they actually belong to the same family uh two two brothers uh, another thing that happened um this week in the market that I felt really, really proud about is the major fashion companies took a pledge at G7 this weekend, or last week, to say that they were going to do a better job to help protect our environment. So we're looking at companies, um, there were actually 32 companies, but the likes of Adidas, Burberry, Kering, Hermes, Nike, Prada, and also Puma, um, the uh, Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy label, um, all of them, they decided that they were going to start paying attention um, to our climate and what's going on with our um, with our climate. Uh, we're beyond the whole climate change conversation now. Now it's just about adapting. Um, as far as what's happening with the 10-year Treasury and the two-year Treasury, as I told you last week, they kissed, they inverted. Uh, last week, the um, last week the 10-year Treasury closed at 1.49% yield, and the two-year Treasury closed at 1.51% meaning the two-year rate is higher than the 10-year rate. That is an inversion, and 
when that happens, the last seven times that that has happened, we have had a recession thereafter. So I'm no longer saying get prepared for the recession. You know, you have to do what you have to do. You can take, you can take my word for it or continue listening uh, to what the media and all those people say on television. All right, let's see what questions we have. Does the, what does it say? Does the gains in the, um, the clothing industry have anything to do with tariffs, blah, blah, blah. So right now, we don't know what's going to be happening in the clothing industry and or the sneaker industry until we find out whether or not the trade tariffs are going to be a real thing. One thing that I want you to know about China is that if we do go to uh, have a trade war with China, it's going to have rippling effects that is beyond um, manufacturing that is going to be beyond clothing. We know that um, starting September 1st, there are going to be tariffs on a number, 91 classifications of shoes, uh, and starting December 1st, yeah, I think another 54 classifications of shoe types. Uh, women's clothing is also going to um, to be a, you know, we're going to have a pink tax. 42% um, of our clothes is made in China. So there's a lot of stuff that we're going to have to look at. This is a great time to pick up some sales, things of that nature. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about my top five news stories of the week and then round that up with Emma Knows Money. I'm going to tell you what to do in case you get laid off this year on Financial Renaissance with the M's. Urban Station online, SSNATL.com. And we are back with Financial Renaissance with the M's. Hey, we are going to jump right into my top five news stories of the week. And we're, we're, we're going to keep that theme of Labor Day going because, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot to this first story. This first story is one of those stories that they're going to make a movie about, you know, maybe in about five years, right? And I love watching movies where the feds end up, like, getting these business people and they've been watching them for, like, years and years and years and just how they how the level of detail that they go through uh, when it comes time to busting people. So here's one of those things uh, for you guys. So sinning on Sunday morning, Steep, this story, bribes, attempts to influence labor negotiations, kickbacks. The feds have been investigating people for four years. They have charges. They brought about charges against nine people, but only eight are going to jail. So what that tells me, if you do the math, is that somebody snitched, right, Trina? Is that what happens? Okay. Snitches get stitches or dollars. I think they get a get, get out a free card. So the, the, the raids, the feds raided uh, four, um, six different locations in four different states. Michigan, Cali, uh, California, Wisconsin, our cheesehead, and Missouri. Missouri. Have you ever watched the Ozarks? You haven't watched the Ozarks with me. It's one of my favorite shows about a financial advisor, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, so things happen in, in Missouri. Um, they do get a little gully there, too. Uh, the raids, um, what the what they ended up finding in the raids, they took computers, blah, 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 but per the Fed's words, they got stupid wads of cash in people's houses. Uh, so there's, um, people are going to be going away for possible criminal racketeering, um, going on lavish vacations, personal luxuries, uh, renting private villas, things like that. You know, it kind of sounds like that Nas and uh, R. Kelly song, Do You Ever Think That We Could Be This Rich? Yeah, that's what they did, but they did it with all paid for by our grandparents, our parents, and our money. That's right. The people that got um, indicted in this situation are people from the UAW union leaders, the uh, current president, former president, um, as well as some of the executives from the big auto industry. I'm talking Chrysler, Fiat, GM, uh, you know, stuff like that. So it seems like some of the labor leaders may have got, taken some kickbacks, and it also looks like they may have pocketed money that was supposed to be used for um, buying flowers for funerals and stuff like that. It looks like they may have pocketed that money for themselves and kind of ran some stuff through nonprofits that they uh, created. So it's going to be interesting to see um, what this uh, what this. Well, you got whacked. Everybody knew the rules. <laughs> yeah. All right. Be very, very careful out there. That's right. That's my Elmer Fudd voice. Insurance companies are pissed off about climate change. But they're not going to bring up the word climate change because it is one of those lightning rod issues, one of those third rail issues that nobody wants to talk about. And hey, scientists are beyond telling us to watch out for climate change. They're just telling us to figure out how to adapt. And in true spirit, the insurance companies have decided, you know, hey, we're not going to warn you about climate change, but we are going to adapt. 
They are losing money hand over fist because of the severity, intensity, and numbers of storms that we are getting in our country. But they've come up with a way to, to, to recoup some of that money. So imagine for a second, dig if you will the picture, that you report your car stolen to both the insurance company and the police agency. And two weeks from now, a detective comes knocking on your door and arrests you for fraud saying that you were responsible for stealing your own vehicle. Yes, that is exactly what's happening now. The insurance companies and the police departments have, have uh, crossed lines, and they've decided to work together um, to, you know, kind of uh, screw you out of money. Um, they are, uh, there have been 14,000 cases of um, insurance fraud that was reported, and this is really gonna, gonna sink its teeth into rural America and also urban communities where people don't have the means to fight back against the big insurance companies. The uh, police departments are actually being funded, so the investigators, the prosecutors, um, and the detectives, their salaries are all now being paid for uh, by some of these insurance companies. And with these insurance companies, I mean the big name ones that we all know about, one of them that likes to wear red. So there were 27 cases that were examined. Um, and a lot of these cases should have been dismissed, but they weren't because the people did not have enough money to fight back. So if you have a loved one uh, that tells you that the insurance company is putting the screws on them, uh, listen to them. They're, you know, they're, 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 they're not joking. Fraud is a felony. All right. I must take the mantle back. I must right these wrongs. That's right. Listen, student loan debt. We talked about it uh, while Paula was here. I don't need to say anything to you else about student loan debt that you don't already know about. But what I will tell you is that 84% of Americans say they are not saving what they think they should be towards retirement because they are dealing with student loan debt. Again, here we are back talking about Labor Day, 40-hour uh, regular work week. Back in the day when my mom was working, she worked a 40-hour uh, work week. She made $60,000 or something along those lines, and then if she worked overtime, time and a half, she'd make an extra 20 or 30. That's what got her over the $100,000 hump. Today, you will get a $60,000 salary, but you will work 60 hours a week. There is no overtime in time and a half. So that is the difference. So when we try to figure out why we can't pay for our education is because as parents, we can't work extra or do extra things to, to help our kids. So I want you to think about who you have or who you're going, who you will be um, voting for uh, next year. And there is the Student Loan Debt Relief Act. They've dropped it down to a one pager. Trina and I will drop that link somewhere. Um, but, but take a look at it and also look at the companies that are backing um, this Student Loan Debt uh, Relief Act. I think it's something we need to consider and figure out how we're going to pay for it. Where is the money? Don't lie to me. <laughs> All right, health care. This one, this one really, really got to me. South Africa, that's right, the country that was strife with apartheid, apartheid. They, in 2007, decided that they were going to have health care, provide health care for all. And uh, this year they are doing it. It is 12, 13 years later, and they are finally going to be providing health insurance for their country. I don't understand why here in America, these here United States of America, we can't get health care right. Health care is one of the number one reasons why people file bankruptcy in our country. So just something to think about. If they can do it in South Africa, a country that was riddled with apartheid, we can do it here as well. All right. Thank you so much. When we come back on Financial Renaissance with the M's, we will have my Emma Knows Money tips, what to do or how to prepare yourself before you get laid off or if you get laid off so you know what to do. So could we all just wrap it up and go home? <laughs> Lots of people meet friends or potential love interests online through dating sites, social media, or mobile apps. It can be a great way to meet people, but not everyone is who they say they are online. In fact, scams related to online relationships are on the rise. It's a red flag if the person wants to move quickly to personal email or instant messaging to continue talking. Professors love quickly. Claims to be from the United States, but is working or traveling abroad. Plans to visit, but cancels at the last minute. Ask for money to deal with an emergency or ask you to open a bank account for them. Here are some things you can do. Cut off contact if you suspect a scam. Watch your wallet. Don't wire money, send cash, or put money on gift cards for someone you know only online. Learn more about online relationship scams at aarp.org backslash fraudwatchnetwork. 
right, we're back with uh, Financial Renaissance with the M's, and I was just told I only did top four stories. Here's a fifth. General Motors, that's right, the once pride and joy of America for 80 years is now the smallest. It, it's the smallest of the car companies in the United States of America. And we'll say that that has something to do with the double dealing between the union officials and also the automotive executives. Back in the day, parents used to be able to make over $100,000 without having a college education if they work for some of these automotive automotive companies. So, all right. This segment of M&O's Money is brought to you by AARP. All right. So, you know, we're talking about Labor Day, but I also want to talk about layoffs because I think that we are smack dab in the middle of a recession right now. And when, we, when you're in a recession, companies start looking at ways of cutting back. And cutting back doesn't always happen with the CEO's salary. Cutting back sometimes happens with your salary and your job. So here are some of the things that I want you to do. So if you do get laid off or if anybody in your family gets laid off, they know what to do. So make sure you're paying attention. All right. Um, when if, if you find out, if you get that pink slip and find out that you're going to be let go in a couple of weeks, tomorrow, today, whatever, the first thing that you want to do is find out when you're going to receive your last paycheck, and then you want to make sure that it's the correct amount. See, there's this shock and awe thing when you find out that you've been laid off, and you, you like go into this panic, and you're not thinking straight. And when you don't think straight, you can't make good decisions. So here's what I tell you. Pause. You don't have to hurry. This is not on you. This is on them. So Make sure that you're getting the correct amount in your paycheck. Look at your unused vacation dates. There's no federal law that requires unused vacation to be paid out at termination, okay? So states may differ, et cetera, et cetera. So dig up your employee handbook and make sure you know exactly what you are entitled to. The next thing is, and, and we've had to go through this in my household, don't sign anything that has to do with severance unless you are a lawyer. Okay, if you're getting a severance package and they're offering something to you, get an, uh, what do you call that, an employment attorney. And have that employment attorney look over that severance package that they're offering you and tell that uh, attorney all the stuff that you've been going through at work because they may be able to negotiate more money for your severance. And I mean that. Straight up, we didn't know that that was to be true, but I promise you it is true. It could save your household. Um, now, if you're getting a package, unless it's everything that you want in it, definitely you want to uh, look at contacting um, the attorney um, and somebody that can you know, help you with it. So there's no law that says that you have to sign um, that severance agreement right then and there. They will give you a deadline, but you don't have to sign it at the time that they tell you to. Now, make sure that you're going to be uh, um, eligible for unemployment. Some companies will ask you to resign. Okay. Don't do that unless it's uh, like in my industry, if they want to let you go, they'll tell you it's better for you to resign than to have, you know, a, a bad mark on your record, blah, blah, blah. But if you're a W-2 person, don't resign. Let them go ahead and, and let you go. Make sure that you can file for unemployment. You cannot simultaneously collect unemployment while severance money is coming in, okay? So you want to look at the laws about that. And then the fourth thing you want to check on is whether or not health insurance is going to be covered. Um, how long is your health insurance plan going to remain uh, in place? If you get let go on the 15th of the month, your health insurance should be paid up through the end of the month. So try to get all of your appointments in with your kids, everybody else. Some companies will offer extended health care along with severance pay. And then there's something called COBRA. That's when you pay the majority of your health care plan uh, for like 18 to 24 months or 12 to 18 months, something like that. But you'll end up paying 100% of that premium, but it is still health insurance, okay? And then the fifth thing is take your savings with you, okay? If you have money in a 401k, 403b, 457, what have you, uh, if the company is letting you go, they're not doing a very good job with their finances. So you don't necessarily want your retirement dollars tied to them anyway. So you can turn around, you'll have the choice of rolling it over into a, an IRA, moving it to another company. There's all types of things. Even um, let's say you're with uh, XYZ company, if they're managing your retirement plan, you can still have it stay with XYZ company, but just not in that former employer's plan anymore. You can turn it into a rollover IRA so you have more um, control of how it's being invested. Uh, and so also you don't get locked out if they decide they want to change up um, 
the retirement fund managers or, or something along those lines. You do have an option of taking a cash distribution of your retirement dollars. All right, and here's what I'll tell you. If you, if, if, if you absolutely positively have to do it, you know, do it. But if you do it, you are going to pay about 50% in taxes. You're going to pay uh, federal taxes at whatever your tax rate is. You're going to pay state taxes at whatever your tax rate is. And then if you're under 59 and a half, you will be paying a 10% penalty. And for a lot of us, we're in a 25% tax bracket, plus 6% state taxes, plus another 10%. That's how I got the 50, okay? So be careful in using those dollars. Um, money that you have in health savings accounts, you get to keep after you leave your job. That health savings account is actually yours. The FSA, flexible savings, you do have to get rid of that money, uh, use it up. But I do believe um, you will have till the end of the year uh, to claim that money. So you want to check with your HR. When you go to meet with your HR department after you find out that you've been, you know, let go, you want to look at those five things that I just listed off. And you want to come back to the HR department and you want to talk to them about each of those things on the list. And then if there's something that's been happening, you know, you want to ask questions about who else is being let go. What are their ages? What are their races? What are their genders? There may be some fodder in there for you to, um, to, to get a little bit more on the negotiating side from them because, you know, ageism is a thing. Racism is a thing. Genderism is a thing. Everything is a thing. And, you know, hey, it's not your fault if a company and, and people, you know, decide to buy planes and boats and other things instead of making sure that they're shoring up the company. You know what I mean? So I told you weeks ago that when they start um, <laughs> getting rid of the flavored creamer and they start using, like, the worst type of napkins and, you know, things like that, and they stop providing silverware and plastic spoonery and you go from nice paper cups to those foam cups, things of that nature, it's time to start looking. And you have until October to, to, you know, look, try to find another job before companies decide that they're going to pause until after the holidays. So usually from about November to about February of the following year, a lot of companies won't be hiring. So again, think about your situation, make sure you've got cash on hand, and make sure you're prepared for anything to go wrong. Always be ready for uncertainty um, in this world, otherwise you're going to get caught flat-footed each and every time. And again, this segment of Emma Knows Money was brought to you by AARP. See you on the other side of the commercial break. Lots of people meet friends and potential love interests online through dating sites, social media, or mobile apps. It can be a great way to meet people, but not everyone is who they say they are online. In fact, scams related to online relationships are on the rise. It's a red flag if the person wants to move quickly to personal email or instant messaging to continue talking. Professors love quickly, claims to be from the United States but is working or traveling abroad, plans to visit but cancels at the last minute, ask for money to deal with an emergency or ask you to open a bank account for them. Here are some things you can do. Cut off contact if you suspect a scam. Watch your wallet. Don't wire money, send cash, or put money on gift cards for someone you know only online. Learn more about online relationship scams at aarp.org backslash fraudwatch network. Everybody that's successful lays a blueprint out. We laid the blueprint out. I stayed true to my dreams, and by doing that, eventually it came true. A lot of times, you know, it's like in life, right? Life brings like drama, and you gotta deal with this person, and the funky <laughs> relationship here, and all these things. You try and just kind of balance them out as best I can. Make a choice, right? You just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide, and then from that point. The universe is going to get out Everybody your way. Everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what real beasts do. Unleash your beast. Bring your history. And we are back with Financial Renaissance with the M's. What a great show we had today. My manager was on and popping. She wasn't hung over. So happy. <laughs> you're never hung over. But sometimes you're really, really, really tired. And today you just, you were giving me life. So I was very excited. Uh, I also was, uh, had a conversation about me and my robot Siri. Um, I would like to put her brain into a, some type of AI robot or something like that and, and uh, have a real conversation with her. Because after what happened with me and, and Siri yesterday, I'm, I'm convinced that she understands when I've, when I've had it with her. Um, we have Paula Cooper Smith, who is running for public school board. Um, she's a public school board candidate. And you should get to know the people who are on the school board 
uh, in your neighborhood, whether you're in your 60s and you don't have to worry about paying that school tax anymore, or you're a young person and your tax money is actually going towards the schools, you want to know who's running the board and what their ideas are. What do they understand about the needs of the average person, okay? The average American, uh, the, the lower 50% of our country uh, economically, who are really going through it. You want to make sure that there's a person that understands um, what's happening there. Also, today, tomorrow will be Labor Day. And when we have holidays, it's cool to celebrate, you know, in our country, Labor Day is kind of the unofficial uh, ending of summer, uh, beginning of fall, you know, if you're into that, don't wear white before uh, Memorial Day or after Labor Day, you know, whatever. I spend a lot of time in Cali, I could care less, I do what I want. Um, but I want you to look up the Haymarket riots that happened in Chicago in the late 1800s. People actually sacrificed their lives uh, so we wouldn't have to work seven days a week, 12 hours a day and also so that there would be child labor laws so kids wouldn't have to uh, go out into the fields and the mines and all types of be put in dangerous situations and so that they would actually go to school so a lot of that stuff has to do with people who protested um, for labor day so that we'd have better working conditions uh, so i you know hats off to them and their families uh, for doing what they did uh, coming up on sensation station network we have sensational smooth sunday um, and I am going to have an awesome breakfast in a few minutes uh, somewhere, I think at the Georgian Terrace, is that where we're going? At the Georgian Terrace, we're going to have brunch, so you can come on out and meet us down there. And I want to thank my producer, Sean Prime, for bringing me life today. I am so impressed with my team. As I said, I got a lot of feedback um, when I was at City Hall this week. And, you know, the show is getting a lot of love, so I appreciate the comments. I appreciate everything that you're doing and saying. And, again, each one, teach one, you know, one love, one heart. Just, just be a good human and make our ancestors proud.